Today I'll be speaking on sudden death in epilepsy, otherwise known as SUDEP, S-U-D-E-P, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy person. So let us see what is this, how is it uh, happening and the details of it. So let's see what is SUDEP, what causes it, who is at risk and how to reduce the risk and should we talk about this to the patients and the carer and how to convey the information. All this will be covered in today's uh, talk. It's very important because we never approach this subject in a patient with epilepsy. We do not even talk to the carers about this. But off late, there have been some change in the guidelines which tell us that we should be discussing about this with the patient as well as the carer at some appropriate point in time. So, SUDAP is a sudden unexpected death in epilepsy and in whom no other cause for death can be found despite thorough post-mortem examination and blood test. This is very important, despite post-mortem examination blood test. Defin this definition will exclude those people who are dying because of status epilepticus who have a seizure and drown. Those are excluded from this. We have a criteria for SUDAP. There are different types of SUDAP. The victim must have had epilepsy defined as a recurrent unprovoked seizure. That's the definition of epilepsy. And death should have occurred unexpectedly with no other obvious medical cause when the patient is in a reasonably good state of health in the absence of trauma or drowning. Every word in this is important. Death has should have occurred unexpectedly. No medical cause for this. With no re, a patient should have been in a good health with absence of trauma or drowning. And this must have occurred suddenly when observed. There may or may not be any evidence of a seizure, but status epilepticus should not have occurred at that time. Evidence for the seizure can be a witnessed one or some other clinical evidence like bitten tongue or cheek. All these also will contribute to a probably a seizure related death. Then you have the definite SUDAP, probable and the possible. Definite SUDAP is an autopsy is done which does not reveal any cause of death which is required for the diagnosis of SUDAP. And probable SUDAP is a diagnosis given to those who previously fit the mentioned criteria without autopsy. Autopsy is not done but clinical circumstances point to a SUDAP. Possible is one which includes cases in which SUDAP seems reasonable diagnosis. But then there is an insufficient evidence regarding the circumstances of death and autopsy is not available. So, you have the definite, the probable and the possible SUDEP. So, how does this occur? Now, epilepsy can produce changes in the cardiac as well as the respiratory system apart from the brain. The people with epilepsy may die unexpectedly without a clear structural or pathological cause of SUDEP. And it is not a category, it is just a condition. It represents many mechanisms which can operate in different individuals. But not always, there is evidence to suggest an epileptic seizure around the time of death. Sometimes there may be a suggestion, sometimes there may not be. So, you have to be guarded and find out what it is. Exact reason or cause is not known. It is in a young adult, presence of convulsive seizures, poor seizure control, poor adherence to anti-epileptic drugs and many anti-epileptic drugs. These all are risk factors for SUDAP. Other risk factors would be a male use of more than one anti-epileptic drug, frequent changes in the dose or the type of anti-epileptic drug, alcohol abuse and certain epileptic syndromes. These are also risk factors. And what some theories have been postulated, they include the cardiac arrhythmias, breathing trouble, brain shutdown and the serotonin deficiency. Even though research is being done in this, the exact cause is not very well established and you find that uh, better understand what happens to the person's body when he or she dies and post-mortem is essential. When you take the risk in perspective, you will be very surprised to know the lifetime probability of dying in a car accident is much more than the risk of SUDAP in patient with control of seizures. The overall risk of SUDAP in patients whose seizures are under control is 1, is to 1 in 1000, that is 0.1 percent. Risk of SUDAP in patients without good seizure control is 1 in 150 or 0.6 percent. And lifetime probability of dying in a car accident is 1 in 83 or 1.2 percent. So, the likelihood of dying from a car accident is much more than dying from a, a SUDAP, but we are still not able to discuss about this with the patient and the attendant. When you see there are certain associations, 
which can help us to predict whether the patient is at more risk for SUDAP. That is, the generalized tonic-clonic seizure more than the partial ones. Earlier onset of epilepsy, the longer the duration of epilepsy, the more refractory the epilepsy, poor seizure control and patients on multiple anti-epileptic drugs. In association with that, you have a mental retardation, add on to it and many of them do die in sleep. So, these are some of the associations which are important. So, in patients, you find a patient who has a generalized tonic-clonic seizure of many years duration, with some mental retardation, seizure control is very difficult to achieve even with 3 or 4 drugs. Then these are the patients who you wish you should warn the family and the carer about the risk of SUDAP. Is any particular drug associated with SUDAP? No, no definite association with any specific AAD and SUDAP has been recognized. Though earlier data said some carbamazepine may alter the autonomic functions and can cause SUDAP but nothing is established. One study found that a higher percentage of uh, SUDAP patients on carbamazepine as compared to other drugs in epilepsy. This is only a possible association, nothing definite has been written in this regard. So, is it because of the cardiac abnormalities in epilepsy? Studies have been done in patients with partial seizures as well as generalized seizures and they noted even in partial epilepsy, 39% of the seizures were associated with abnormal cardiac rhythm. And this can occur during the ictal or the post ictal period that is along with the seizure or after the seizure. And this abnormal rhythm may outlast the seizure duration by minutes to hours. So, it can uh, thing outlast it by even a few hours. This is very important to recognize this. This is a patient who has got a left temporal lobe uh, thing uh, epilepsy focus and you find that this is when the seizure is starting the activity electrical activity is getting abnormal and the same thing is continuing it is becoming more abnormal and you can see the ECG which is going down is almost all right but then the speed is picking up and you can see towards this this much more uh, thing uh, rate is increased than for the normal. So, there is a definitely a change in the uh, rhythm of the heart also not only just the brain during a seizure. 